Thank you very much. The, the question of the Derin Devlet is indeed one that um, is particularly prominent in Turkey, and I think Dror's put his finger on something that is a, a characteristic that we don't really understand, as he said, uh, nor one that's much um, very common in, in most other countries. Um, but it is, in fact, um, widespread, ubiquitous, I would have to say, in Turkey, uh, and shifts only in the nature of the explanations people offer for it and who's included and who's excluded, um, depending on your political preferences, where you live, uh, and your own uh, kind of inclinations towards how you understand power. Uh, the next speaker is Professor Ofer Benjo of Tel Aviv University. She's going to take up a topic which I think is integral to our understanding of the domestic arena in Turkey. In fact, without addressing it, we would be utterly remiss in trying to understand um, the current uh, situation in Turkey. Uh, Ofer Benjo is a senior research fellow at the Moshe Dayan Center for Middle Eastern and African Studies and the head of the Kurdish Studies program at the center. Um, I have to say that um, that program has grown significantly. Uh, it also offers Kurdish as a language um, now and has become uh, quite a magnet for um, both student and, uh, and other interest. Uh, she's Professor Emerita in the Department of Middle Eastern and African History at the University, and her special fields of interest and expertise are Middle Eastern history, the modern and contemporary politics of Iraq, and the Arabic language. Uh, she has authored numerous books and articles. Her, uh, her, the list of her publications is extremely lengthy, and her latest book, which has just recently appeared, is entitled The Kurds of Iraq, Building a State Within a State. Over, please. Can you hear me? Yes. Okay. Uh, if you follow uh, PM's uh, Prime Minister Tayyip Erdogan's declarations about the Kurds, you would be very perplexed because one day he declares one thing, the other day he declares something different. One day he says that he is willing to meet even with the PKK, and the other day he's even recently he said that he's going to maybe start again the death sentences against the terrorists, namely the PKK and Kurds who are being uh, associated with the PKK. So under the AKP, we can uh, governments we can say that the Kurdish issue uh, became multidimensional full of paradoxes and much more complicated than any ever a time in the past. And the question that I need to ask today is, uh, what are the causes for these uh, contradictions and, uh, and these developments? Uh, what are the changes that the Kurdish camp itself has undergone? And what are the ways that the AKP tried to cope with the problem? We can say that in the last decade, conversions of uh, internal and external developments came together to catapult the Kurdish issue into the center of uh, the uh, 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 Turkish politics. There are, I could enumerate three uh, group of causes, uh, interrelated causes. The first group of causes is the, um, the geopolitical changes in the region, which include, as you know, the 2003 war, which changed the, 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 the geopolitics regarding uh, Iraqi Kurdistan, then the upheavals in the region, which started, uh, as you know, at the end of 2010, and uh, brought uh, the, the brought uh, down the barrier of fear everywhere, also among the Kurds. The withdrawal of the American forces from Iraq at the end of uh, 2011, and then the last one, the Turkish takeover of the Syrian bo uh, area in, Kurd in uh, Kurdistan, how should I say it, in Syrian Kurdistan, in the Kurdish Syria, in Syria. The second group of causes had to do with the uh, developments and transformation in the Kurdish scene itself. If we were talking until, let's say, 1990s about uh, terrorist groups 
we are now talking about a strong national movement, which has taken two moves, we can say two trends. The first one is the violent one, which is led by the PKK. The other one is the non-violent one, which is very interesting and which is really much more difficult maybe to cope with. And we are talking about what we can say um, a non-violent uh, a, la, a la Gandhi style of, uh, of hunger strikes. You know, now there are some, uh, maybe hundreds of Kurds are under strike and belong uh, other people as well. So this, this kind of uh, thing which has happened is, uh, is changing all together the, the, the situation in, in Turkey. The third group of causes is the changes in AKP itself, the, 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 its own policies and its own constraints which uh, really made it very difficult for it to, to cope with the problem. Uh, for example, the decision of the AKP to withdraw and uh, not to um, not to allow the the the, um, the uh, allies to launch the attack on Iraq from uh, Turkey's land uh, enabled the formation of uh, the Turkish of the Kurdish area in Iraq, and from there, you know, the Kazi state in Iraq. The other things which uh, the AKP has done, which also complicated, is. Um, the, the opposite one is the drive to use the, to to join the EU, which then again um, forced it to do certain or moved it to to do certain uh, uh, moves towards the Kurds. But at the same time, uh, there were other uh, considerations such as uh, which took place uh, lately, and this is the need to um, to co to uh, deal with the uh, ultra nationalist vote and to uh, to take them into their uh, camp. So all these policies were fraught with contradictions and paradoxes, and I will talk about these paradoxes right now. Uh, the first paradox is that domestically the AKP governments exhibited greater liberal liberalism and openness toward the Kurdish issue than any other government before. Yet, the PKK's challenge has been, uh, uh, um, and the national movement as a whole, were solidified under the AKP, especially in, in the AKP's third term. The second, um, externally, the AKP was um, uh, adamantly opposing the KRG, the Kurdistan Regional Government, but at a certain point, by the, term, by the end of its third, uh, third term, uh, it has be, be, become the, more, the greater supporter of the KRG, which uh, in this way it contributed willy-nilly to the uh, a contagious effect of Turkey's uh, Kurds, uh, of the Kurds uh, in Iraq on Turkey. Uh, on another front, one of the motives for the marriage of convenience with uh, Syria, with Bashar al-Assad, was the need to curb the PKK. But it turned out that by this time, um, of course, as you know, uh, Turkey is leading uh, the anti-Assad campaign. But by this way, it opened another Kurdish front from the Syrian, uh, from the in the south. Um, finally, one of the objectives for the rapprochement with Iran was the need to coordinate policies vis-a-vis -vis the Kurds in the entire region, but the estrangement between Ankara and Tehran, especially in the last year, has revived again Iran's support to the PKK. In short, we can say that Ankara is encircled now by a Kurdish problem on many fronts, where the internal and the external uh, became intertwined. Indeed, the AKP has had to devise different strategy to each front, which made it much more difficult to cope with the problem. And it, we can say that Turkey had to, um, uh, to differentiate between good Kurds and bad Kurds, good Kurds in Turkey and uh, itself internally, and good Kurds in Iraq and bad Kurds in Syria. So it makes it much more difficult. But the problem about these fronts is that it is no longer separable. These fronts are no longer separable as we knew them in the past. Yes, there are borders, but the uh, synergic influences between all the Kurds is much stronger than any time in the past. 
Uh, in the 1990s, uh, the, the, there were two domestic issues uh, which fueled Turkish threat perception, and this was Islamism and the Kurdish problem. But by the time when AKP reached power, so the Islamist problem disappeared altogether, threat disappeared, and we have remained with the Kurdish issue. Um, and uh, this is why when um, the Kurdish issue flared up in the uh, mid-1980s, uh, it was still perceived as a um, terrorist problem that should and could be uh, solved by uh, force of arms. But as I said, this terrorist problem has metamorphosed into a, 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 a national movement which had impact on the entire uh, uh, domestic scene, politically, economically, and socially. And moreover, it proved to be the Achilles heel uh, of, of Turkey where all the neighbors who wanted to take, uh, re, uh, to manipulate the Kurds uh, in, in, with a view to uh, destabilize uh, Turkey. So what were the uh, AKP strategies for coping with the problem? Ideologically, it's very interesting. The AKP sought to engage the Kurdish rank and file by appealing to the Islamic uh, bond of solidarity. And one of the things, for example, that it sent 10,000, no less than 10,000 imams to the Kurdish area to preach in, in Turkish to the Kurds. Uh, economically, the AKP encouraged investment in the uh, underdeveloped Kurdish eastern part and, um, and opened the new opportunities for Kurdish businessmen. But by now, we know that actually uh, it was more a lip service kind of because uh, the region remained the, must, uh, the most underdeveloped area. Politically, the most important thing was the Achulum of uh, 2000, um, 2009, uh, the Kurdish opening, which appeared promising as it uh, promised to solve the problem peacefully. But again, as in the other cases, um, it, uh, it turned out to be uh, just a, a promise. But the point is that by, uh, in, uh, the, all these uh, developments left the impression that AKP had managed to, um, to do well with the Kurds as well, because in the last elections, uh, most of the Kurdish votes went to the AKP. But still, shortly after this impressive success, a combination of internal and external factors acted in tandem to eclipse the AKP's gains. Uh, the first one, which was mentioned here, the, uh, what I can call the AKP civilian soft coup against the military, against the Turkish military, which, um, and the trials of high-ranking uh, military personnel, uh, which caused severe disorientation and demoralization of the army, weakening significantly uh, its hand vis-a-vis uh, -vis the PKK. I can give a lot of uh, um, quotation of uh, military commanders who did not want to, in, to uh, involve in such uh, actions because they didn't know what will be the result of this. Um, another important development which came to the surface before the June, to, uh, already before the June 2011 elections, was the gro growing national tendency of the AKP itself. Why? Because, as I said, it needed. To, um, to use the voices uh, to, uh, of the nationalist um, uh, constituency, especially of the MHP, so that uh, if there were elections for the president, he might win uh, the, you know, the, uh, in the parliament and in the, um, the constitution will give him the upper hand uh, there. This is what was his hope. I will not go into details. But uh, the point is that this new stance uh, contributed to the polarization in the Turkish society, both between Turks and Kurds, and also gave further fuel to the Kurdish national movement itself. Uh, the, the Kurds themselves felt that the AKP is taking uh, in one hand what it has given uh, in the other hand. And for example, it opened a, a TV station or uh, other uh, ban on the use of Kurdish uh, language uh, and activities. But on the other hand, now uh, in prisons in Turkey, there are 7,000 activists in prison. And some of them are, as I said, on, on hunger strike. And also, uh, the government's half-hearted gestures could not uh, anymore um, uh, be, uh, satisfy the Kurds who are on the rise for some time now. Um, ironically, the Kurdish organization began to use AKP's uh, tools for mobilizing the Kurds, and this is very interesting. 
Uh, in recent years, the PKK is using more and more religion to mobilize the Kurds. They are sending imams uh, and uh, uh, Friday prayers and uh, using Islamic discourse. A uh, very interesting thing which they invented was civic Friday prayers where people come to pray not in the mosques of the government but in the streets. And in this way, they call it, uh, this is against the assimilations, the relig religious assimilations of the government. Um, they are, what they are saying is uh, these are uh, anti-state prayers where Kurds call for their rights during the prayers. Erdogan, of course, didn't remain silent against uh, these developments, and he tried to cope with the problem by calling the PKK as uh, atheists, uh, Zoroastrians, uh, anti-Muslims. He said, for example, in one of his speeches, they are cheating you, let us teach them a lesson. And uh, this was the way to try and stop the uh, avalanche in this uh, Islamic uh, area, where is uh, the most important uh, power of the AKP. Um, externally, of course, I should mention the contagious effect of the Arab Spring, especially in Syria, uh, which had a crucial impact on the Kurds in Turkey. First of all, the AKP's vigorous anti-Assad stance uh, and its support to the Syrian opposition moved Assad to renew his support to the PKK as a quid pro quo. Second, the bolstering of the Syrian Kurds gave a lesson uh, or a kind of a, a model to be copied by the Turks of uh, Turkey. And um, uh, third, uh, the border between, as I said before, the Tur Turkey and, uh, and uh, Syria have become, uh, has become porous, and so the influences would move very easily. So due to all these developments, the Turkish government and the, um, the politicized Kurds went into extremes since the summer of 2012, when we see that uh, attacks uh, have been, um, um, the, the AKP, uh, the, sorry, the PKK changed uh, its strategy from hit and run into hit and stay. They tried to occupy certain areas. Uh, the Turkish army also intensified, escalated its activities. If we want, if is one to believe uh, uh, PM Erdogan, he said that in September alone, um, 500, uh, 500 PKK militants were, as he said, rendered in ineffective, rendered ineffective in uh, Erdogan's uh, means um, killed. Uh, meanwhile, there are also uh, important developments on the popular level. As I said before, the strengthening of the Kurdish national movement took various forms, including acts of disobedience, demonstrations, protests, hunger strikes, and even boycott of parliament activities. This is the recent thing. And um, uh, the, uh, we can say that there's also a very change, important change in the Kurdish discourse. The barrier of fear has disappeared, and they, now they can talk about everything. But also there is a change of discourse among the Turkish um, in the media and the others. Uh, while the uh, Turkey, Kurdish issue was a taboo for so many years, now it has been the most debated issue. Uh, the trickle became an avalanche after the uh, attacks in Syria and what happened in the Kurds in Syria. And now many intellectuals, journalists are pushing for a, a peaceful solutions of uh, the problem. I'll finish before, don't worry. And um, so I'll finish, yeah. Um, uh, before uh, I, I conclude, many Turks and Kurds have pinned hopes in the new constitution. Uh, which is being drafted now for establishing new framework of state Kurds relationship and for enhancing a peaceful solution to the problem. However, rather than bringing the representatives of the Kurdish Peace and Democratic Party, the BDP, into the process, the AKP sought to marginalize them and even to close down the party because of its organic links with the PKK, which is listed as a terrorist group. Finally, the AKP government then now is in the proverbial situation of damned if you do and damned if you don't. Namely, if it grants concession to the Kurds at this specific time, it will be blamed of surrendering to terror. If it does not, it will provide further fuel to the Kurdish national movement, and I don't know what Erdogan is going to choose. Thank you very much.
you very much, Ofra. I think that there are a few people who could do justice to the complexities of the Kurdish issue. Um, I think your, um, your discussion leaves one practically stupefied to try to understand what might happen and how one might make a decision um, if one were in Erdogan's place. Um, okay, 